I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. Let's talk about the word occupy. All right, we, it's in the Luke chapter 19, verse 11. While they were listening to this, Jesus went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. Now, a mina was a Greek monetary unit. It was worth uh, about 100 denarii or about four months' wages. Now, the King James Version is how we normally hear this scripture. And it says, you know, he gave them money and said, occupy till I come. Now, he's going to Jerusalem to be crucified. He knows he's going to defeat Satan. And he's, this, is, this is talking about the period of time between his death and resurrection, and he comes back as the king. It's an analogy. It's a story. But in between that gap is the church age. And he is giving the church age a very distinct assignment to occupy. Now, can you define that? We have to define that. What does that mean? What are we to do? Now, I believe most of the church is ignorant to what that is talking about. I really do. Most people think when we say occupy, it, they're talking about conquering territory for God. That we're going to conquer. We're, we're going to, you know, conquer and take the devil on, right? But listen, friend, the conquering's finished. It's already done. It's already finished. Jesus won the victory over the devil. He did not say to go conquer. He said to occupy. This is a completely different mindset than conquering. And we have to understand exactly what it means to be effective for the kingdom. Now, obviously, you can't ever occupy something you don't conquer. Right? We understand that. But he did that. Conquering is a completely different assignment. Now, if you think of conquering, you think of power. I'm going to conquer. I have power. I'm going to conquer, right? You're going to conquer. But occupation is less about power and more about delegated authority and administration. You have to understand those two terms before this event's over today. If you're going to occupy anything, either a business or anything in the earth realm or anything for God, you'll have to understand how authority operates, specifically delegated authority and administration. All right. For instance, a police officer. Now, a police officer is just a human, but he can stop a multi-ton truck by putting his hand up or saying stop. So does the truck have more power than he does? Well, of course. The truck could run him over. See, a police officer does not rule by power. He rules by authority. And we have to understand that. Now, let's kind of get a picture of who we are. A new young church in Ephesus, Paul is making sure they understand who they are and how to live life in the first chapter. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, 18. Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he's called you, the riches of this glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his what? His incomparably great power for you. You can put your name there. That power for us who believe. Now, that power is the same. The same power as his mighty strength that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand. Now, the right hand infers authority. It talks of authority. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed how many all things under his feet, all things under his feet, and appointed Jesus to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, 
the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So if Jesus is the head, who is the feet? Help me out now. If he's the head, we're the body, who's the feet? The church is the feet, and the church is you, people, you, okay? So we could go back up to the scripture and say this, that we have been placed in a position far above all rule and authority, power, and dominion. You say, well, Pastor Gary, that's not me, that's Jesus. Well, I beg to differ with you. If you look over to Ephesians chapter 2, we find right here in the second chapter, verse number 6, it says this, and God raised us up with Jesus... And seated us with him in the heavenly realms. We're seated with him. That means we share the same authority he has. Are you with me? Far above all rule and authority, we have been placed spiritually in that position of authority. Now, we have to ask ourselves, well, how does a king rule? Obviously, a king is seated. He's not jumping up and getting all flustered and running around and trying to do that and do that. No, no, he doesn't do that, does he? He is decreeing and speaking. He's giving decrees. He's speaking and giving directives. He is ruling by authority, not power. He has power, but he rules with authority. He has the military, he has the power to back him up, but he doesn't rule with power, he rules with authority. He's seated, you're seated. And so Jesus demonstrated to us how we are to carry this authority that he gave the church because he demonstrated to us how he carried it. Are you with me? All right, let's look at this in Matthew chapter nine, verse number one. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, came to his own town. Some men brought him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say. Easier, help me out now, to say... Your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has what? Power? No, authority on earth to forgive sins and to heal. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority, not power, authority to man. I want you to understand this. This is very important. Power always follows authority. Power was released by authority. Not power, but authority. Power follows authority. So how did Jesus release his authority? He spoke. He spoke telling you how to do it. He spoke. Mark chapter 5, verse 40. After he put them all out of the, of the room there, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, a dead, a dead girl, speaking to this dead, dead girl, he said to her, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. Mark 4, 39, he got up and he rebuked the wind and said to the waves. He said to what? He said to the waves. He said to the waves. Stop. Quiet. Be still. Then the wind died down. Mark chapter 11, of course, we know the story. He cursed a fig tree. The next day they came by that tree and they saw that it had withered. Peter remembered what? Peter remembered he heard him speak to it. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Notice in every single case, Jesus never asked God, the Father, for help in any situation. In fact, it was known of Jesus that he spoke as someone who had authority. 
Is that what's known about you? It should be. You have the same authority. He said to the paralyzed man, get up. He said to the little girl, I say to you, get up. He said to the waves, quiet, be still. He said to the tree, may no one ever eat from you again. He said to Lazarus, come out. Authority. Listen, friend, you don't need more power. We've already read Ephesians, the first chapter that says, and his incomparably great power is for you who believe. There is no power that compares to it. That's what we just read. You already have all the power there is. So what's the problem? People say, well, I don't, you know, I don't, nothing's happening. Well, the problem in the church is it's not a power issue. It's an authority issue. People don't understand how authority operates, how the kingdom operates. And so they spend their time begging and trying to pray for more power, more anointing. I need more anointing. I need more power. No, no. You need to understand how authority operates. Power always follows authority, right? If you hear people pray, you ever heard people pray, you know, just say the name of Jesus like 25 times in a prayer? Or I heard them say, in the name of Jesus, 25 times, you know, praying for someone, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Why do they do that? They're trying to convince themselves they have authority, that's why. Listen, if you have authority, you don't have to act like it, you have it. Let me say this again. When you understand you have authority, you don't even have to say, in the name of Jesus. You have authority. You can speak, come out. You don't have to qualify it by saying, well, in the name of the Father, in the name of, you know, no, no. Trust me, the demons see the glory on you. You bear that name. Now, of course, we see in the Bible that Peter said, you know, in the name of Jesus, be healed. But the, the thing I'm saying is, when you have the authority, I don't have to say to my kids, hey, kids, this is your dad Come to supper. They know I have authority, and they know they're under my authority, and they get up and come to supper. 